Nebraska's corn crop is 55% silking according to the USDA's latest progress report. That's seven points ahead of the state's five-year average, but a point behind the nation's mark of 56%. To learn about western beam cutworm control in corn and dry beans, particularly in this part of the state, we talked with Nebraska Extension's Jeff Bradshaw in Scotts Bluff Wednesday afternoon. So the western bean cutworm is a moth. Uh, we usually start seeing it emerge in higher numbers around now. Uh, it's a pest of corn and dry beans, and the reason it's a pest is the adult moth will lay eggs in the corn or dry beans, and when the larvae hatch uh, in corn, they'll, they'll graze a little bit on the leaves, but that's not really as important as when they drop down to the ear and they start feeding on kernels. And in dry beans, they'll feed on the leaves, uh, but then they'll also feed on the pods and the seeds inside those pods. And that, again, is the really important part of the, the damaging life cycle of that insect. Tell me about uh, your research that you're doing and kind of what you're trying to aim for this time of year. So uh, right now with Western Bean Cutworm uh, research we have going on is we're looking at this tiny wasp called a parasitoid. The scientific name is Trichogramma austrinii. Mm -hmm. There'll be a quiz later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and um, so it's, it's a very tiny wasp. Uh, and it's interesting uh, in that it lays its eggs inside the egg of the western bean cutworm. So right now we are doing some releases in the field at a couple uh, on-farm sites to s try to understand the efficacy, like how many of these parasitoids would we, need to be, would we need to release in order for them to be efficacious against western bean cutworms. What uh, should farmers look for in their fields to see if there are signs of damage from western bean cutworm? So in dry beans, they're particularly difficult to scout. Uh, particularly we have a number of dry beans that, that vine over and they're just can't really uh, reasonably walk through. It's very difficult to find egg masses. In corn, it's a little easier to scout. Uh, the egg masses are generally find, found high up on the plant. And we have a threshold of about 4% of the plants uh, of 20 plants in a field on average uh, will give approximately a threshold uh, or action threshold for, for control. So typically we use egg masses or maybe small larvae uh, in that threshold. Uh, there's a number of um, foliar insecticides that can be used uh, to reduce their numbers, uh, but also some BT products. Yeah, tell me about the variety selection, how that might help. Yeah, so we have some different trans, uh, genetic engineered crops that we, we have um, uh, tools available to us for western bean cutworm control, a couple different gene events that uh, we can use that are expressed in the corn plant uh, in the ears that will um, reduce the survival of those western bean cutworms. And so with our parasitoids, what we're trying to work with is to find another source of mortality for that insect, hopefully a, a, an effective and affordable way to manage them. Uh, because we've found in some situations, some areas in Nebraska might be seeing either reduced efficacy or possible resistance developing by this insect. Tell me about the resistance issue with this insect. So uh, myself and Julie Peterson in North Platte and Bob Wright in Lincoln um, have a number of different studies going on uh, looking at different, different aspects of resistance in uh, with the western bean cutworm against uh, pesticides. Uh, one of which she's looking at is uh, resistance against pyrethroids, and the other is with a couple different events uh, that are expressed in corn, uh, BT events. And right now, it's, uh, we see a lot of variability between um, different fields in terms of susceptibility of those uh, corn traits against western bean cutworm. Uh, but she's got some uh, laboratory studies going on right now in North Platte to try to evaluate some of those uh, resistance characteristics. I should ask, what are overall numbers like this year? So um, uh, myself and Julie and Bob, we, we have a survey that we conduct every year, black light trap, um, and we collect numbers. And, and out here anyway, uh, our black light trap has been the highest that we've seen uh, in the five years that I've been uh, scouting for these in this area. Uh, of course, that can be somewhat uh, um, location specific. We have high numbers here at our black trap behind me. Um, we have low numbers further north, um, just kind of north of the valley here. So it can be somewhat variable, but overall I would say the numbers have been higher. Is that alarming? Uh, it, it can be alarming, particularly uh, for a lot of our dry bean growers that, um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, don't have as much scouting flexibility as, as we would in corn. Uh, and again, it's another reason why we're looking at these parasitoids because it'll really help our dry bean producers, I believe.